This is Cedar Park. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking around and I saw it. And you have lost the sun, have the weather? Mrs. Commissioner, we welcome you very much, all these people from this organization. We are very proud that you've been able to be here today with us and getting to know SEDAFOP from the practical point of view. This is where the ideas regarding early leavers, qualifications, skills, mismatching, anything which has to do with policies regarding youth employment, Anything which has to do with policies or European policies regarding to tools like the uh, European Qualifications Framework, the famous Europass, which um, last year 24 million Europeans have hit on our websites to access this important tool. This is where it happens. Your next um, big challenge, which is the new skills agenda to which we have contributed um, over these last three months, but also with publications over the years. We look forward to playing a role in implementing the new skills agenda with other member states. And we are prepared to do this, to make sure that no one is left behind. Welcome to the House of Vet. And I hope you enjoy your very short stay here. We would have liked you to stay more, but we know how busy you are. I'm really very pleased to be here with you uh, in this prestigious agency and in this nice building. It is uh, the agency that has uh, really spearheaded the development of vocational education and training policies across Europe for 40 years. When I took on my portfolio as commissioner, I welcomed the chance to work on issues that impact directly on people's lives. And the exact same can be said for the work that you are doing here in CDFOP. For my part, I have made the fight against youth unemployment a top priority. Thanks to your expertise on VET and work-based learning, you, the CDFOP colleagues, are helping to put this priority into an action. In this way, you have helped to make this agency an invaluable source of expertise and quality work for the Commission to rely on. Wherever I go and wherever I talk about skills, CDFOP's name and work are on the lips of my interlocutors. The upcoming skills agenda is a crucial component. If we ask people to be more flexible, to adapt to the global economy, to remain competitive in an ever faster changing labor market, we have to invest more in human capital throughout their life course. I rely on your support, colleagues, to help make this agenda a success. Today, I look forward to seeing for myself some of the groundbreaking work you are taking forward in two areas. On the skills panorama, using big data techniques to tell us more about the diversity of skills needs and supply across Europe, and Secondly, on how to expand apprenticeship, especially in small and medium-sized enterprises, and make that a first choice and not a second option. And this is very important for me. Dear colleagues, let me thank and congratulate you all once more for the quality of your work, for the commitment and the dedication. I am more motivated than ever to work with you the coming years to achieve the necessary social changes European citizens deserve. Thank you very much and good luck and thanks for all your uh, work. CDFOP is our preference partner to help us with uh, underpinning that policy. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. that 70% of those who work in education say What is our next step in terms of uh, getting better data and evidence on skin needs in Europe? 
what kind of learning should I undertake now, leading to qualifications that can then be recognized in the labor market. And I will give the floor to Alena to show you. The Skills Panorama is a unique website uh, because it acts as a one-stop shop uh, for data and intelligence on skills, on job prospects and on labor markets in Europe. And then you get full I mean, it's not full because it's still a rather succinct analysis. Because a lot of people don't know where the job opportunities lie. Oh. It, we did not have the skills to do it. So then I asked James, James, could you help us? And you see the result. And one of them asked, yeah, but uh, what is best that you invest in people and, you, and they go or you do not invest in them and they stay? <laughs> <laughs> the skills panorama is addressed uh, to policy makers and to policy experts. Work-based learning, we can address the highly skilled as well as the low skilled. Pleasure to meeting you, <laughs> and uh, well, I must say it's very attractive. Because this as part of uh, the work they do for uh, showcasing their work. Similar products they have prepared also uh, for their assessment. We have two teachers here who organize this, coming from this specialty, and, and seven pupils, seven apprentices. Thank you very much. I'm always defending apprenticeship as a, a way of learning because I really believe in it. Work-based learning pays off and it gives you the, better, the best possible chance to enter the labor market, to stay on it and to have the right skills you really need. I saw it in many places in Europe so far and everybody is happy with it. So I think you made the right choice. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm happy with you love this, I can imagine. Otherwise, you are, you see it, you feel it. That's good. <laughs> Who has done that? <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs>